Testimonies to the Church, volume 8, page 293, tells us this. In the future, Satan's superstitions will assume new forms. Errors will be, be presented in a pleasing and flattering manner. False theories clothed with garments of light will be presented to God's people. Thus, Satan will try to deceive, if possible, the very elect. Most seducing influences will be exerted. Minds will be hypnotized. All right, she saw this way back in her time. She saw this happening. She saw all the way down to our time that Satan would use amazing things to deceive God's people. So why is hypnosis a bad thing? Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, that all things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. You see, hypnosis is giving over your willpower to the hypnotist. It is letting down your guard so that somebody else can strongly suggest things to your mind. And it works. People have undergone open heart surgery. No pain. Just hypnosis. Women having child birth pain free just undergoing hypnosis someone comes into the hypnotist and says hey i can't quit smoking will you please strongly suggest to my brain that i shouldn't smoke any longer i, can't, I don't have the willpower to do it so you undergo hypnosis and what they do is through repetitious instructions they suggest to your brain that smoking is, a, is, is they attach emotions basically to the act of smoking so that when you go to pick up a cigarette, you feel all these negative emotions that they have now attached to the act of smoking. Here's what's happening in your brain when, you're, when you undergo hypnosis. There are these different brain uh, states, mental conditions that our brains are naturally in. Okay, These are all just natural states that your brain is in. There's the delta uh, wavelength. It's when you're in deep sleep. The theta wavelength, when you're in light sleep, when you're in REM sleep and you're dreaming, there's a little bit of activity going on there. When you awake and you're, you're, you're awake but relaxed, this is alpha state. Beta is you're awake and you're excited. When you undergo hypnosis, it locks you in to alpha brainwave patterns. When you take certain drugs, it locks you in to alpha brainwave patterns. Listen to what Lori Cobalt says in a book called Power of the Witch. The science of witchcraft is based on the ability to enter an altered state of consciousness we call alpha. In alpha, the mind opens up to non-ordinary forms of communication, such as telepathy, clairvoyance, and precognition. Here, we also may experience out-of-body sensations and psychokinesis, or receive mystical visionary information that does not come through our five senses. In alpha, the rational filters that process ordinary reality are weakened or removed, and the mind is receptive to non-ordinary realities. Alpha is the springboard for all psychic and magical workings. It is the heart of witchcraft. You must master it before proceeding on to any other spell or ritual or exercise in this book. Mystics in every religious tradition speak of alpha states of consciousness and the lure of divine light, although they do not do so in their own, although they do so in their own metaphors and images. In their own ways, they have learned how to enter alpha as they pray and worship. They learn how to become enlightened. There's a lot of truth in what she's saying. I mean, she's coming from a, a the, the other side, saying that this is the heart of witchcraft. Satan knows that. That's why he's using this state of mind. It's the state of mind. It, it's, it's our eye of faith. Ellen White talks about the eye of faith. The occult world calls it your third eye. And that your third eye must be open to be enlightened. Okay? Satan is exploiting this mental state. So what's happening in your brain when you watch television? Remember, the definition... That last part is it, hypnosis can be induced by staring at a light in an otherwise dark room. So that's what we're doing. When we watch television, you're sitting there staring at a light source that's flickering at you at 30 frames a second, and you are going into a semi-hypnotic state within seconds. There's tons of, of research done on this. 
and, and scientists have found that even if there's no images, even if you just flash a blinking light at somebody, you can induce a hypnotic state. The other thing that happens, we have this left and right brain situation happening. Your left side of your brain is your analytical, critical, logical side of your brain. It compartmentalizes the information coming in. It's sifting and it's filtering through what's coming in. And it's a very important side of your brain. The right side of your brain is also important. It's, it's in control of your emotions and your aesthetic and your dreamy side. We should be using our whole brain when we're, when we're doing things. But when you watch television, an interesting thing happens. Your brain switches from predominantly all brain thinking to right brain thinking. So basically, the left side of your brain shuts down. You are no longer able to critically analyze the information that's coming into you through your senses. And when that switchover happens, the body releases a rush of endorphins. These are the body's natural opiates. It hooks up to the same receptor sites in, on, in every cell in your body as does opium or heroin. So now, the definition of, of, of sorcery, pharmakia, we're dealing with something that is a very powerful drug. You become addicted to your body's own natural opiates when you watch television. And if you watch television, if you watch a lot of television, try stopping instantly. There's been many studies where they've done where people watch lots and lots of television and then they stop. And they, they go through the same withdrawal symptoms as does someone coming off of heroin. They have headaches, insomnia, irritability, because you've become addicted to your body's own natural opiates. Within seconds, this rush of endorphins takes place. And it didn't happen because you just went and jogged for 45 minutes. Right? The, nat the runner's high, that's where you, you exercise, and at the end of that exercise, your body releases endorphins, okay? This is an unnatural release of endorphins into your system, and you become addicted to it. So basically, what we have here is the opiate of the masses. That's what the television is. It's the home hypnotist. And I think, I mean, even if we're watching 3ABN, or we're watching, you know, some religious video. I think that we should have our Bibles there with us and we should break our concentration and not be staring at that light source constantly, be checking everything against the Word. Check it. Because you're, you're, when you're watching television, your critical analytical side of your brain is not working. You're unable to filter the information coming into, into your system. It comes in all at one chunk. This quote uh, I found this in Neil Nedley's book there, Proof Positive. It's, he was quoting Neil Postman, a professor at NYU that uh, has a whole curriculum he calls Media Ecology, where he's studying the effects of television on society and all these things that are happening in society based upon all the technologies and media that, that, are, that we're exposed to on a daily basis. He's very much against the television. He says, the horror of television is that the information goes in, but we don't react to it. It goes right into our memory pool, and perhaps we act, react to it later, but we do not know what we are reacting to. When you watch television, you are training yourself not to react. So later on, you're doing things without knowing why you're doing them or where they're coming from. You see, two things are happening. Two things are happening. You are training yourself not to react. When you're sitting there watching something and you see someone about to kill somebody on a TV show or in a movie, do you jump up and you say, hey, don't kill that guy? No, you don't. Because you know that it's not real. And so you sit there and you don't react. Yet your brain is being tricked because part of it is saying, hey, something's really happening. That's why you feel those emotions and that anxiety when something bad is about to happen. And so then when you're out in the real world and something bad is happening, you don't react because you've trained yourself not to react. 